بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد ما بعد من سترز May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to do that which is pleasing to him and save us from all that is displeasing to him. My brothers and sisters, there was a man. And what a man. A man whose concern from his earliest childhood was not amusement of friends or earning, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla jalla. A man who was bothered and concerned and perturbed that people did not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their creator, and instead they worshipped what they had created in their minds and, in their, and with their hands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the stories of his Anbiya alayhi salam so that we can reflect on them and use them as a template to measure ourselves and see how we and our lifestyles, our choices, priorities, concerns and goals map on to the ideal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set out for us. This man, boy really, at the time, had such a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he spoke to him. And his Rabb not only answered him, but told us the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال إبراهيم ربي أرني كيف تحيي الموتى قال بلم تؤمن قال بلى ولكن ليتمنى قلبي قال فخذ أربعة من الطير فصرهن إليك ثم اجعل على كل جبل منهن جزءا ثم ادعوهن ياتينك سعيا واعلم أن الله عزيز حكيم الله سبحانه وتعالى في سورة البقرة told us about this beautiful incident where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and remember when Ibrahim alayhi salam said my Rabb, Rabbi arini kaifa tuhyil mawta he said oh Allah oh my Rabb show me how you give life to the dead and see the reply Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said abalam tumin qala abalam tumin Allah said he said Allah said don't you believe and Ibrahim alayhi salam said قَالَ بَلَا وَلَكِنْ وَلَكِنْ لِيَطْمَعِنَّا قَلْبِ He said, I believe. Of course I believe. Why not? بَلَا Yes. But to be stronger in faith. To have more اتمنان of the قلب. So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take four birds, then tame them, cause them to incline towards you then slaughter them and cut them into pieces and then put a portion of that mixture on every hill and call them and they will come to you quickly in haste and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almighty and all wise my brothers and sisters ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you his signs Build a personal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla jalla. Remember that the kalima with which we enter into Islam is not a statement of information but a statement of a relationship. The first question in the grave, man rabbuk, which is our next destination, the grave, the first question that we will be asked there is about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us build that relationship such that when the question is asked, the answer will automatically come. And who knows, if that relationship is strong enough, then someone else will answer that question on when it is asked. This beautiful ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us this incident in the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam illustrates that relationship. 
please reflect on the tone of the question. Rabbi, kai, rab, rabbi arini kaifa to heal mauta. Oh Rabb, oh my Rabb, show me how do you bring something back to life. Tell me, does it sound like this is the first time this kind of conversation happened? Or is it something that seems to follow a pattern? A pattern of conversation between two who know one another intimately, who love one another so much that nothing else exists for them when they are together. I am constrained by language and syntax and so I cannot say what's in my heart. And this is not to say that the two are in any case equal. They are not. One is the creator, the other one is the creature. The two can never be equal. But the relationship is such that the creator decided to tell us about it and to present it to us as a standard for us to aspire to. Then see the reply to that request. Is it really a reply? Or is it an indicator of such deep love that I have no words to describe it except to say, Ya Rabbi, I am also your slave. Ya Rabbi, I am also your slave. Allah replies, Amalam tu men? Don't you believe that I can do it? To which Ibrahim salam says, Qala, Bala, Walakinni yat, walakinni qalbi. He did not say, I, yes, I believe. He said, Bala. In Arabic, the word Bala is not, it, it is the answer to a negative question. Don't you believe? Don't you have money? Bala. Of course I have money. It's as if to say, oh, you, how can you even question that? Isn't it obvious? Of course. Why not? It's a lot more than saying yes. Now once again, please reflect on the tone of these two parts of the ayah. This is a conversation between two who know each other very well. They are totally familiar and comfortable with each other. And they talk to each other all the time. And that is why Rasulullah said, if Ibrahim salam said this to be stronger in faith, we have an even greater right to say it. So ask Allah to show you his signs. I will not go into the rest of the ayah here. That is a topic of another khutbah inshallah. Just stay with the spirit of this conversation because this is the spirit of Hajj. And that is the title of today's uh, reminder and khutbah. The spirit of Hajj. The spirit of Hajj is the spirit of the one who loves meeting his beloved. That is the spirit of Islam. Of total submission where there is no difference between what the slave wants and what his Rabb wants. What do you want? I want whatever you want from me. I want whatever you want for me. Both. I want whatever you want from me and I want whatever you want for me. That is the meaning of Rida Bil Qada. Not simply accepting the Qada, the destiny of Allah, but being pleased with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about Ibrahim alayhi salam's orientation. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ وَسِلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah said, when his Rabb said to him, submit, he said, I have submitted. He did not say, I will submit. He said, no, I have submitted myself to the Rabbul Alameen. Please notice, who is the witness of Ibrahim alayhi salam's submission? Ibrahim alayhi salam's witness is Allah Himself. Jalla Jalla no. Now fast forward. This man is now in his 80s. And this man and his young wife and their newborn baby are on a journey. Google says that the shortest route and he's talking about today's times between Palestine and Makkah is 930 miles. That is 1,497 or 1,500 kilometers. That's like New York City to Minneapolis or Tampa. They walked. At that time, this was not a caravan route, which it later became. Was there a road? Obviously, Ibrahim had no map. Who showed him the way? 
I know it's easy to answer that. But let me ask you, will you be comfortable to go somewhere, comfortable, to go somewhere that you are not familiar with and make dua and say, oh Allah, please take me back home. Please show me the way. And then you drive along that route and take whichever turn comes into your heart. To do that, you need the connection. And you need the purity of the receiver, which is your heart, to read the signs correctly. Now, when they arrive at their destination, this family of three people, when they arrive at their destination, which is a barren valley in the middle of nowhere, no habitation, no people, no cultivation, no market, no food, nothing. Just imposing, intimidating mountains all around. There the man leaves his wife and child. A child that he was given after begging Allah for decades. His firstborn, his heir. At that time, his only potential successor. He leaves them and turns away and departs. His wife, she is human like him. She is terrified to be apparently abandoned in the wilderness. To the mercy of the elements and whatever the mountains conceal. All potential threats to the life of her baby. I don't think she was thinking of her life at all. She calls out to the man, she calls out to him, where are you going, leaving us? He does not reply. He continues to walk because he is marching to another tune to the orders of the one who ordered him to bring them here in the first place. He is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His wife, she is human like him. She asks, are you doing this on your Rab's order? He nods. She says, then go. She says, go. Our Rab will not allow us to perish. Cut the relationship with the dunya and connect to Allah. For Hajar alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam was dunya. Cut the relationship with the dunya and connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understand that as long as we are doing what Allah told us to do, he will not allow us to fail. He will not allow us to fail. Then when the man passes over the fold of the land and he reaches a place where they cannot see him, he stops. His Rabb told us what he said to him. رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَجْعَلَ فِدَةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقُهُمْ مِّنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ O oh, our Rabb, I have made some of my offspring to dwell in an uncultivable valley by your sacred house. At that time the house was not built, but that is the location of the house. In order, O oh, our Rabb, that they may establish a salah. So fill some hearts among the people with love towards them. And O oh Allah, provide them with fruits so that they may give thanks. Ah, who is it that inspires in the hearts of those he loves? Words that span the centuries to ring true in the hearts of those who love him today. See the order of what Ibrahim salam asked his Rabb. I am not going into the details of this dua. That is the subject of another khutbah inshallah. But let me suffice to ask you to reflect on what you would have asked in such a situation. If you and I had been in that situation, what would we have asked? And what is the order of things that we would have asked him? And then see what Ibrahim alayhi salam asked. May Allah grant us this connection. Meanwhile, our mother Hajar alayhi salam, she doesn't just sit and wait. She makes the best effort that she can make. This is the meaning of sabr. To make the best effort and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the result. Make the effort. 
your best effort and then make dua and ask Allah for his help. Hajar alayhi salam did what she could to assess her situation and see what was around her. She climbed the nearest hill, Safa, and looked around. She saw nothing. Then she descended and came to her son, checked him out. He was at the bottom of the hill. Then she went towards another hill, Marwa. As she walked towards Marwa in the valley between the two hills, she must have said to herself, let me hurry, the child is alone back there. So she ran until she came to the bottom of the slope of Marwa. She climbed the slope to the top of Marwa. She looked around, nothing, she returned. Once again in the valley, on relatively level ground, she ran. Then she checked on her baby and then she climbed Safa again and she did this seven times. She made the best effort that she could make. When you do the best that you can do and make dua, Allah answers. Jibreel alayhi salam came and dug zamzam for them. Water that has been coming out of the earth for over 4,000 years. The help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes when we have completed our effort. Whatever may be the challenge in life, domestic, career, politics, health, organization, make the effort, the best effort you can make, and then make dua and trust in Allah. The help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come. Fast forward again, the little baby for whom Zamzam was dug is now, as his Rabb said, old enough to walk with him. Ibrahim alayhi salam returns to visit the wife and son that he had left behind three, some years ago. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once again is the best witness. And he described what happened. <clears throat> فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَعُوا السَّايَ قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي يَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي يَزْبَهُكَ فَانْزُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى قَالَ يَا بَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُمَرُوا سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ فَلَمَّا سُلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَنْ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ قَدْ صَدَّقُتَ الرُّؤْيَا إِنَّا كَذَلِكَ نَجُزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَظِيمٍ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمٍ كَذَلِكَ نَجُزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ in Surah Al-Safat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that incident. And when his son was old enough to walk with him, he said, Oh my son, I have seen in a dream that I am slaughtering you in sacrifice to Allah. So look, what do you see? Look where? In your heart. What do you see? I am telling you my dream. As you hear this, as you listen to me, as you understand what is likely to come upon you, look in your heart, what do you see? Do you see resistance? Do you see rebellion? Do you see displeasure with the qadr of Allah? <clears throat> do you see questions? Do you see doubts? Do you see lack of faith? Or do you see complete and total submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla And like father, like son. Think of the mother who brought up a child like this. Where the child does not see the father from the time he is born. And the first time the child literally cognitively sees his father, recognizes him, the conversation they have is this. Yet see the, see the response of the child. He says, Oh my father, do what you have been commanded. Inshallah, you shall find me patient. You shall find me of the Sabirin. Inshallah. Because I don't know. I have never been slaughtered before. I don't know what it feels like to have a knife on my throat. But Inshallah, if Allah wills, I will have sabr. I will not complain. I will not scream. I will not... Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, then, Ibrahim, then Ismail alayhi salam advised his father. Imagine this is a little kid, this is a little boy. He said to his father, tie me up. 
tie my hands and feet so that I don't struggle. And then he said, put me down on my face so you don't see my face. As you are cutting my throat, you might not do it because of your love for me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then when they both submitted themselves to the will of Allah and he had laid him prostrate on his forehead like this or on the side of his forehead like this perhaps for slaughtering, did Allah allow it to happen? No. That was never the intention. Allah does not ask for human sacrifices. Allah said, and we called out to him, Ya Ibrahim, you have fulfilled the ru'ya, you have fulfilled the dream. Verily, thus do we reward the muhsinun. This is how we reward those people who have a son, who do excellence, who struggle and strive in the path of Allah to do the best they can do. Verily, that indeed was a manifest, clear trial. And we ransomed him with a great sacrifice. Jibreel was sent with a ram from Jannah. And we left for him a goodly remembrance among generations to come in later times. Allah said, we decreed that this, this Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, this whole sacrifice will be remembered for generations to come. The Eid, the celebration which we call Eid al-Adha. Salam and peace be upon Ibrahim, salam and ala Ibrahim. Who is sending the salam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalla. Thus indeed do we reward the muhsinun. Allah said, this is how we reward those who do ihsan. My brothers and sisters, I am sure you all recognize the symbols and all that I have narrated to you. Hajj is the reward. It is the remembrance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family for their dedication to him jalla jalla. They loved him and he loved them and so he made their actions into the arkan, the pillar, the manasik of the greatest of the acts of worship which is prescribed for us only once in our lifetimes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that these actions be performed by all those who love him as actions of worship, the reward for which is forgiveness of all sins. The spirit of Hajj is the spirit of obedience, of love, of seeking the pleasure of Allah. The Hujjahs do not care about comfort of clothing or of food or accommodation. They are there only to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek His forgiveness, to ask for a new beginning, to ask for another chance. Allah accepts their dua and on completing Hajj, the Haji is free from sin as he or she was on the day that they were born. That is the message for the rest of our lives. That is the spirit of Hajj. To understand that only obedience leads to success. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with you or never to be displeased. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sayli al-muslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim